this council covers 4,000 square kilometres. It's massive. Garner, thank you for being with us. How much, how do you assess, how do you assess the kind of damage that's been done to your council area? Kahuna, Kerrang, where you are, Coondrook? At present, uh, there's a lot of water obviously moving across uh, farmland around Quambatook and in the west of the, of the council. Um, this rain here, I think, will bring a whole new, reinvigorate it, bring a whole new level of destruction. Um, there's farms underwater, crops underwater. We should be in the peak of hay season right now, and no one's even thinking about cutting. And, right. and as the crops are degrading as we speak. At this point in time, the, there are some towns that have been threatened, like Kundrook and, um, and Kerrang. Kahuna and Leechville at this point have fortunately been spared. Uh, we're also, uh, how, how many, also how many of your constituents? How many of your constituents have been displaced? I'm talking about, you know, damage to farms and so on. I mean, how many? The, and, and how do they rebuild out of all of this? Very difficult question. Uh, they've been through it before in 2011. Look at it. Uh, I would have said that now that, that the floods are not quite as severe out in the western part of the council at the moment. In 2011, but this rain could easily bring it up. I, I would have said it would be quite heartbreaking, and it's not just the financial strain; it's also the emotional strain. Absolutely. So these, these. I mean, the, the beauty of Ganawara is that we have very strong community. People have been rallying around. We've got dairy farms underwater. I know there are dairies being cranked up that have been idle for many years to allow dairy farms to move their cattle and to keep their operations going. But it's a monumental effort. All right, Garner. Look, let's go back to Andrew. Andrew, how do you read the situation? You know the scene backwards down there at places like Achuca and Kahuna. I mean, how do you read this? Well, there's economic devastation going to lay between this. You know, we're looking at nearly $2 billion in new roads. The last flood came from central Victoria down to here. This time we've got it from the central of Victoria and from the Murray. So that's unforeseen. You know, when Dan was talking about, about people's cows, people have had to move their cows to other dairies to milk, and that is not a small task, to retrain a cow to use somebody else's dairy. And that's just farms. So we could be looking at every part of the whole tourism sector of Echuca falling on its backside for three or four months because the infrastructure just won't allow people to get there. Our major highways have got sinkholes, our bridges have been closed, getting food. We didn't get a paper, Alan, last week for four days. There was no supplies coming in. So the, the scope of this is so vast, it's not from the water point of view what you see from the sky, it's the volumes of water that's actually hit in these, these townships. Absolutely. It's All right. How fast it All right, Andrew, great to talk to you. Look, we'll leave it there. Look, uh, it's a pathetic thing to say, but our thoughts are with you. We've seen all those pictures. My God, there but for the grace of God. Thank you for what you've done. Thank you for sharing that with us and letting the rest of Australia see what sort of a mess it is. But at the end of the day, you see, these are bureaucrats and politicians. This is a direct consequence of failed policy in relation to the management of the Murray-Darling Basin. Thank you, Andrew. Thank you, Garner. And thank Lloyd's out there somewhere. Thank the three of you. Yes. All the best. Our thoughts I mean, are with you. Any people and let them see what happens. All right. Yeah. All the best.